Ever wondered why some people seem to have a gift for music? Have you ever wished that you could play by ear, sing in tune, improvise and jam? You're in the right place. Time to turn those wishes into reality. Welcome to the Musicality Podcast with your host, Christopher Sutton. Hello and welcome to the Musicality Podcast. My name is Christopher Sutton. I'm the founder and director of Musical U. And this is another in a series of episodes where we're exploring themes that came up in our 100th episode celebration, where we had 26 world leading experts chime in on the question of one thing you can do to unlock your inner musicality. And so we're picking up on some of the recurring themes there. And today's episode should be a fun one because our theme is the importance of joy and pleasure in your musical journey, which seems like it should be obvious, right? We all get into music because we love music. But I think it's probably fair to say that all of us struggle along the way and all of us occasionally lose sight of what we love in music and why we're doing it in the first place. And I loved some of the comments from our guest experts We had Brent Vartstra, who his main tip was to focus on what brings you joy, because whatever your journey looks like, there will be hurdles, there will be sticking points. And he was saying, you need to focus on what brings you joy, because that will get you through the difficult moments. Jimmy Rotherham talked about how learning music should be a a pleasurable experience, something that's at the heart of the Kodai approach he advocates. And I'm sorry to say is not always at the heart of music education. You know, I think a lot of us, whether we're self-taught or learning with a teacher, get into that murky territory of worrying so much about exams or requirements or perfecting pieces that we forget that actually learning music should be fun as well as playing music. We had Matthew and Jeremy from Music Student 101 who made several great points about how you can improve your musicality, but I think the running theme was it should be fun. You should be enjoying these activities and you should be using the activities you enjoy in music to level up your skills. And Sarah Campbell, who is joining us on this episode, was talking about how children very clearly demonstrate joy in their music making much more freely and willingly than a lot of us as adults do. So um, before we dig into this topic, I'll just ask each of our guests today to introduce themselves. Adam, why don't you kick us off? Hi, everyone. I'm Adam Liette. I'm the communications manager here at Musical U, and I'm a trumpet player and a guitar player. Hello, my name is Stuart Hilton. I am the community conductor on Musical U, and uh, I also play guitar, and uh, there you go. Hi there, I'm the resident pro for piano here at Musical U, and I'm also a um, voice and piano teacher and a music business coach. Wonderful. And I mentioned there your contribution to the 100th episode roundup where you were talking about the difference between children and adults in learning music. And for me, it really jumped out that it was it was partly about joy. It was partly about enjoyment and feeling free. So maybe we could start with you and your thoughts on this topic, the importance of joy and pleasure in learning music. Sure. Um, I love coming back to the initial question of why did you want to play music? What brought you to learning to play the piano or the guitar or what brought you to wanting to sing? Um, And in, in almost all cases, you know, the answer is it brings me joy. It makes me happy and I like to do it. (laughs) And it's easy as we go throughout our studies to kind of lose track of that because we might get frustrated when we can't master a certain skill or, you know, we're stuck in a piece and, you know, it's not going well, or you're sitting down to improvise and uh, you're feeling really stuck. And so you have to come back to, okay, why am I doing this again? Um, And for me, you know, as a teacher, if there are any teachers out there listening, oftentimes we don't set aside the time to play and practice nearly as much as we should because we get a lot of music in the studio. And then when we go home, we're like, oh, I'm exhausted. So um, I am making a more conscious effort for myself to, you know, come back to the the idea uh, that... I do this because it brings me joy. So, you know, setting aside time uh, with my husband so that we can sit down at the piano and, you know, improvise an F major blues (laughs) and just have fun together. That's awesome. And it reminds me of a very different era of this company, you know, back in 2011-ish, I was giving this presentation about easy ear training as it was then. And I kicked off the presentation with this like 
bluesy harmonica solo just to kind of get the audience's attention. And I opened by saying, you know, music is incredible. It's fun and it's exciting and it's passionate. Learning music is none of those things. <laughs> and I kind of went into how like musicality is often the missing piece and we, we lose sight of what got us excited in the first place because we get, you know, mired in scales and etudes and repertoire. And I know for me, like it was a lot about genre as a, a teenager and a school music student I was learning classical pieces for the most part, which was great for technique, but I, I wouldn't go home and listen to classical music. And looking back, I, no wonder I wasn't super excited about studying my repertoire. <laughs> like that was not <laughs> the music that got me excited. And, you know, obviously exactly. there there is a place for exercises and things that are not in themselves super fun. Although I think there are often ways to make them more fun. But I just think, you know, you can't, you can't allow yourself to so completely lose sight of what gets you excited in music. I think, I think you've demonstrated that really well, Sarah, by talking about playing with your husband. I love that. So Adam, um, you are married. I don't know if your wife plays uh, guitar as you do or trumpet as you do, but I, I like the idea of the Liette family band. <laughs> well, I'm getting it started now with my children. I'm, I'm fortunate enough. I'm in this wonderfully joyous time as a parent where my kids are getting old enough to start playing. And so I'm, I'm teaching them you know, uh, piano mostly right now, and their fingers are finally getting big enough for guitar. And so it's like every night I come home from work, and it's like, okay, it's dad, dad music time. And they just like literally line up at the door, and it's one after the other, these 10, 15-minute increments where they all come in for their lesson. Um, so it's super fun. Um, but I, I, when I think about my kids, there was this great thing that happened a couple months ago. Uh, my nine-year-old comes up to me and he plays piano. He's like, dad, we have a talent show at school and I want to play a drum song. I'm like, drums? Why drums? He just wanted to play drums. It sounded fun to him. I'm like, well, I don't have a drum. And it's Monday afternoon. He's like, when is this talent show? Friday. Great. Thanks. And so I, I go downstairs. And I'm like, drum, drum, drum. What can I do for a drum? And I, I grabbed a big pan, a pot from the kitchen. And I was like, okay, here's your, and it's, it's he was playing, playing a hand drum at the school and tell me what, what it was. And I was like, okay, here's your drum. And I turned it upside down and he started just tapping on it. I'm like, okay. I'm like, so what are you going to play? It's like, well, I'm just, and he just started tapping something. I'm like, okay, I need to help you. And he just played some stuff that was in his ear. I transcribed it, helped him organize it into a, a song, which he called the, the Dino March. He loves dinosaurs. And he was so happy for the next four days playing those that song over and over again. And then the day of the talent show came. And I, I got off work, went, went to his school where I got to see it. And he definitely got, as Melody Payne would put it, off book. <laughs> he played because um, he, he didn't have his music in front of him. But he was so excited to get in front of his school and just play. And, you know, if I would have allowed myself... Jay, you don't have a drum. We're not, no, Let, let's play your piano. But he found such joy in playing that in front of his, his, uh, his fellow students. And now next year he joins band. And I just know he's going to want to be a drummer. So I'm going to have a drummer in my house. But, you know, as they're getting to that age, it's like, well, what instrument gives you pleasure? What, what, what speaks to you? You know, and that, and, and I think sometimes, Sometimes, especially with kids, we want to them to learn a certain instrument or we want to learn a certain instrument for whatever reason. Um, and we all have this inner desire and you need to just nurture that and whatever instrument your children want to play, you know, let them play that instrument. Even if it's the oboe and you know it's going to be just tuning nightmare in your house for the next four years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's interesting. I, I wasn't expecting to talk a lot about kids on this episode, but it, it is such an interesting lens to see things through, you know, I, I've mentioned on the show a couple of times now I'm learning drums myself. And so I have a practice pad and drumsticks around and my daughter who's two and a half will wander in, she'll pick up the drumsticks and she'll just kind of wail on it. And I, I watched her do that. And it genuinely, it reminded me that that's what I want to do. <laughs> you know, I'd been doing these rudiments and these drills with a metronome. And then I was like, oh no, wait, I, I should just put on a punk song and drum. <laughs> and uh, suddenly it gave me a totally different perspective that got me excited about learning drums again. And it, it's, yeah, I don't know. You can get very sugary and cliche talking about how kids open your eyes and that kind of thing. But I think this is a case where they have that pure interest in joy that I think we as adults are too kind of 
too serious to allow ourselves. You know, I, I think for me, the tricky thing about remembering joy and pleasure is that it can feel like it's clashing with being ambitious. You know, if I'm serious about music, if I really want to accomplish this stuff, I can't be just having fun. And the two don't have to be contradictory. You know, it doesn't have to be either or, but I think that kind of Protestant work ethic that you should be suffering in order to improve is often, you know, actually holding us back. And so I, I don't know, I've just had a few moments like that with my daughter where I'm like, Oh yeah, learning music should be fun. <laughs> How about you, Stuart? Um, yeah, I, I was just thinking when you're talking about that, that's, you know, having that as like your beginning point is probably pretty good to, to bring you into music. Um, because I, I've seen, I guess, well, I, I wrote um, down that, uh, well, a couple of things. Um, uh, cause I know a couple of guys that I went to high school with and one, he, he went as far with bassoon to go to Eastman, uh, school of music for bassoon. He got his master's degree in bassoon. He played at, I think it did. One of the large uh, places in New York City with an orchestra behind him um, and all that. Now, he doesn't play any music at all. Um, and I have another friend. Um, he went on. He played trumpet. And uh, he went on. He got into playing uh, trumpet for country, oddly enough. So he was actually on, uh, I think it was Nashville Now, way back when Cable first started. He was in the band on that. He went to Vegas, played there. Now, he doesn't play at all. Um, and I asked them, I'm like, well, what happened? And they're like, well, the one, he kind of said it. He was like, all I did was music, 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 music. I never took a break. He said, you know, from the time he woke up to the end, he was either working on an instrument, performing, uh, and doing that. So it was almost like he, the joy was kind of taken from it. it, became work, um, you know, versus something he enjoyed, uh, which was something, um, a guy I played music with, he always kind of talked about, um, cause I would run sound for a country band and he always said, you know, we have to make sure we're having fun. Let's you know, if we're not having fun, then it's work. And then why are we doing it? You know, because if, if it's a passion, we, we should have a smile on our face when we're doing it. And, uh, and that I've, that's always kind of stuck with me. It's like, man, we got to have fun. And that includes, um, you know, when we get into a point where we're in a band, you know, playing with other guys that, you know, we look forward to, to getting with and doing music with, you know, because, you know, I hear the other things, you know, you get like a band together and there's like constant drama, you know, the last thing you, you're looking forward to at the end of the day is like, Oh yeah, got to get together with these guys and uh, deal with all the issues and drama that uh, come with it. You know, it kind of takes out the fun um, of things. Uh so, yeah, so I try my hardest to, to find ways of, of keeping it fun and joyful. And um, it actually brings to mind uh, when we were on the road last weekend, uh, going back to the, the long uh, guitar solos, uh, we were playing in Ocean City, Maryland. And uh, the crowd was quite uh, influenced by um, liquid refreshments. Uh, so anyway, we're playing and there's one guy during most of the show, he's bouncing up and down the whole time. And I'm just like, he was cracking me up. So I go into the solo and in a, in an improvisational mode, I started playing a note and bending it up and down as the guy was bouncing up and down. And I was just, it cracked me up. And I think a couple other guys were laughing outside. I'm like, that's what keeps it fun. You know, just finding a little ways, you know, to do that. It's like the other band I have on the uh, outside. You know, there are a lot of bands that go and it's all about the performance. We have to be professional. Can't do this. Can't do that. You know, but you're in an audience. So you, you want to make these connections. So uh, there's a song out right now called Tennessee Whiskey. And we were doing it. And it's kind of a slow song. And we, instead of doing guitar solo in the middle, we do a harmonica solo. So we're playing this at a campground. And uh, this little girl came walking up to the front of our singer who was doing the harmonica solo. And she just kind of looked and put her hands up. And without even a second thought, he put the harmonica down and picked her up on his shoes. And she sl he slow danced with her, you know, while we were playing the song. And I was like, that's what it's about. You know, that's, you know, that keeps it fun. And those are good memories. Nice. Well, I, you know, we do our team call every Monday and you often have stories from gigs on the road. And it's been interesting because I think you've definitely experienced both sides of this, you know, being in the band where everything's fun and joyful and being in the band where it's a drag and, you know, 
can't expect every musical project to be fun from start to finish, but I, I think your, your stories always remind me that if it's not at least fun most of the time, you're probably not going to stick with it. That's, that's the reality. And, and you shouldn't stick with it, I think. Um, so I hope, I hope this conversation for anyone listening has reassured you somewhat that it's okay to enjoy learning music. I'm sure some people are listening to this being like, duh, <laughs> you know, I, I enjoy it all the time. But I know that there are also a lot of people listening who are like, you know, it has been feeling like a bit of a drag lately. Or, you know, maybe I can make some changes that would remind me why I got into this. And I'd like to think that is a big part of the spirit of Musical You and the Musicality podcast is trying to remind us that music should be about joyful, free creativity and expression, not just ticking the boxes, passing the exams, playing each note perfectly. You know, that that to me is not the spirit of music and the spirit of music is about joy and pleasure. So I hope for anyone listening, hearing the experts on our episode 100 roundup and hearing us today um, talk about how joy does not have to be in contradiction to achievement. You know, these were some of the world's most expert music educators, people that you can look up to who were talking about the importance of joy and pleasure as their one tip. Um, So unless you are looking to be a world touring concert pianist and train from the age of eight through 30 to achieve technical perfection, I think it's fair and safe to assume that you can allow yourself some joy and pleasure. And as Brent Vastra pointed out, that may actually be the key to succeeding long-term and achieving what you want to in music. So uh, as was to be expected, this conversation was itself joyful and a pleasure. Um, Thank you to Adam, Sarah, and Stuart for joining us on this one. And stay tuned for more in this series where we're picking up on the common themes from our episode 100 celebration. Hey, we're not quite done, in fact. Anastasia from our team couldn't join us for the group session, but she did want to share something on this topic. So here is Anastasia. Hi, my name is Anastasia Wojtynskaya, and I'm the assistant content editor here at Musical U. Um, In my own musical life, I play the piano, bass, guitar, synthesizer, and I'm an occasional vocalist. I currently play in a band where I play the bass and the synth. And I have a solo experimental electronic music project. So um, when it comes to the importance of joy and pleasure in your musical life, honestly, that importance cannot be overstated because it's not as if we really get into music thinking that we're going to make the big bucks. We get into it because we're fascinated by it, because we want to create music just like the stuff that we hear and love. So the first thing I think to remember is that these kind of concrete measures of success do not always correlate to how much fun you're having in your musical life, how much you're enjoying what you're doing. Um, It's great to pass your music exams with flying colors. It's great to get awards for recitals or for music that you've written, but that really doesn't mean that you're enjoying yourself. So questions that you can ask yourself to see if you're kind of on the right track with happiness in music is um, if you're taking lessons, do I like the way that I'm being taught or the way that I'm learning? Uh, Do I like the music that I'm playing or the music that I'm writing? Am I writing something that feels true to myself or to someone else? Uh, How often do I play just for fun rather than sitting down and practicing? Um... Have I ever passed up trying something that's musically interesting to me because someone else deemed it a waste of time? And so I listened to them and said, okay, maybe it is a waste of time and then didn't go for it. So being honest and checking in with yourself about not just your musical progress, but your musical well-being and happiness is massively, massively important. And I've definitely been guilty of placing more emphasis on this arbitrary measure of success rather than my own happiness in music. And in my experience, this failure to self-evaluate your happiness leads to um, kind of this general disillusionment with music that kind of hangs over you like a fog. So again, the way to avoid this is just be honest with yourself. For example, um, I was in a band for about a year and a half that will remain unnamed. Um, And in the last three months, really, um, it was like pulling teeth. I wasn't having a good time anymore. 
But my logic was, okay, I've been doing this for about a year and three months. I guess I will just keep doing it. But I was so unhappy. I think my bandmates could see that I was unhappy. And it was literally just time that would be better spent doing something else. So after a particularly long and uh, long distance tour, I kind of sat down with myself and was like, okay, I don't think I want to be doing this anymore. Musically, this does not align with my interests any longer. And again, this is time that would better be spent exploring something else. So I quit. And that's one of the best things that I ever did in my musical life. I was just honest with myself. And I said, this doesn't work for me anymore. I need to find something else that will bring me the happiness that this band used to bring me. Um, if, for example, you are taking lessons, then a great thing to do is really sit down with your teacher and communicate with them to sort out how lessons can be better tailored to your musical inclinations if you're not happy with the way it's going. Um, traditional lessons may not leave much breathing room for you know, what you want to play and how you want to learn, in which case, find a new teacher. Find something that works for you. If you're not enjoying it, it's not worth giving a teacher the money. Um, in general, don't get so hung up on your musical goals also that you forget to enjoy the ride because something I for sure found is that I think kind of the joy of music lies not so much in achieving these concrete milestones, which feels great, don't get me wrong, but the greater joys are kind of in the little revelations and the steady progress that you experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you for listening to the Musicality Podcast. This episode has ended, but your musical journey continues. Head over to musicalitypodcast.com where you will find the links and resources mentioned in this episode, as well as bonus content exclusive for podcast listeners. That's musicalitypodcast.com.